All right, welcome back to the Crab Days, and today we're going to learn how to play Corrosion from Capstone Games, and this is an amazing game from first-time designer, very impressive, Stefan Bauer. All right, so like I mentioned in my playthrough, this is a engine building game that uses sort of hand management, action selection, you're playing your cards that select your actions, and then you're going to perform it on the board. All right, so this is, like I mentioned, the setup and rules video. If you want to see the playthrough video, click on the link below. Um, let's not waste any more time. Let's get started. But before we do, three things like usual. Please like, subscribe, and comment on my YouTube channel. That would be amazing. Let's go. All right, so for the setup, you are going to be throwing a little bit of a monkey wrench. See what I did there? All right, because there is no massive game board like in most board games. All right, you are given this tiny little board, and that's about it. Now, this is double-sided, so there's one side for single player, solo player. You're going to see it up here in the top right with the little X's. All right, we're not talking about solo for this video. Go see my solo playthrough. I'll explain you the little rules. We're going to make sure to play it on this side and put it out in the middle of the table. And right, then you're going to have a stacks of components to fill up the sort of marketplace out here. All right, so you're going to have the advanced engineers. These are the ones with the hats. Shuffle them all together, lay out three. One-time machines, shuffle them together, put out three. And these are the turning slash rotating machines. Again, shuffle them all together and lay out three. Now, for the top section here, these are chrome machines. They come in two different types. If you're going to see at the bottom of the chrome machine, you have some with the double bars and you have some with the single bars. I right, shuffle them each separately and then lay out three as you see like this. And this is going to be your main play area. All right, on the side of the board here, you can have all the awards for end game uh, achievement slash points. All right, now, first, you're going to shuffle all the eight tiles together and lay some out according to the number of players because it does change. So this is simulating a three player game. It's going to differ. Uh, you're going to have less in a two player game and more in a four player game. All right, but for right now, you're going to have five. After that, you're going to go into the B and C stacks and find the replicas of all the A's that were taken. So the B's and C's are going to be on top. And you're going to tell their B or C because they also have a little chain next to the point values there. Now, why are there chains? Just a reminder that you're going to go into the general supply, grab a random watch token, bonus token, and attach it to each one. And it's going to look something like this. All right, the last thing you're going to do for the main game board is you're going to set up the white bonus chits according to the number of players. If you're playing four players, you play with all of them, but depending on the player count, you might have to remove some from the game. All right, this acts like one of the end game timers. All right, so for the players, you're going to give them each a player board and a factory. The factory is going to point the X towards the player. All right, they're going to have three water symbols. Now this is called the boiler. You can have one in the boiling water section and two in the cold water section. Each player is going to start with three points, one chrome gear, one large and small gear pointing on the three section. And finally, give each player one of the uh, lettered decks of cards. There's going to be six cards. That's going to be their starting hand to go. All right, that's pretty much all you need to know about the setup. Oh, last thing is you give the first player the monkey wrench, and then you're ready to go. All right, welcome to the Corrosion Rules Overview Breakdown. Now, like I mentioned in the intro, the core to this game is both thematically and mechanically engine building. All right, a lot of what we're going to be doing is collecting machines. We're going to be slotting them into our factory or our player board. So here's going to be Chrome machines. These are sort of passive abilities. The other types of machines are going to be going around your factory, eventually rusting. You're going to have to replace them. We're going to be collecting resources. There's two different resources in this game, large and small gears and uh, sorry, and Chrome gears and all this stuff will help us build our machines. All right, down here, you do have a little boiler. We're going to be gaining some water, which means boiling water and then using it. So it's going to be going back to cold water. And there's different things you can do with cold water, uh, but that deals more with secondary actions. All right, but basically, we're going to be building a lot of stuff in our tableau. All right, now, uh, let's talk about a typical round structure. And everything is written on the first player marker, which is the monkey wrench. All right, so the way the game works is on your turn. All right, you're going to do a maintenance, optional, where you can perform secondary actions. Then you have your main action, not optional, perform one of the two main actions. And then again, maintenance, exactly like number one, where you can perform secondary actions. And then after that, at the end of your turn, you're going to pass this over to the next player. All right, this is an actually very important piece in this game because there is a follow mechanism and you don't want to lose track of who the current first player is or active player. And that's why it's important to know who's holding on to this. So when everyone's finished, they're following. You're going to re-follow the regular turn structure from the monkey wrench. 
All right, another thing I do have to mention is at the bottom of your player boards, all right, it actually depicts all the main types of actions you can perform on your turn. So before in the maintenance, when we talked about secondary actions, all right, there's two types of secondary actions. First is building machines. So at any point, if you have to build a machine, that's considered a secondary action. And then the other secondary action is using water. So moving water from your top of boiler section to the bottom to perform some action with the water. It's usually always rotating stuff around your factory, but we'll get to all that stuff later in the video. All right, the main actions, you have two choices. You're either playing cards from your hand to perform the depicted action on that card, or you're rotating your factory. All right, so what I'm gonna do in this game is first I'm gonna explain how to play actions from your hand and the follow mechanism. Then we're gonna talk about rotating our factory. Then we're gonna talk about all the different actions you can perform on your turn. And then finally, we're gonna come back at the end and talk about end game scoring. All right, so let's get started. All right, so the first thing I wanna tackle is the whole hand management and follow concepts of this game. All right, so remember, as I stated, one of the main actions you can do is playing a card for its depicted action. Now, when you're the active player and you wanna pick any card, you can pick any card you want and just play it to perform its action. After you perform its action, you're gonna discard this card, but there's no common discard pile like in a deck building game or whatever. This card gets discarded into the factory of the same numbered sort of section. All right, so if I played this card for this action, after I perform my action, I'm gonna discard this card into my current two section of my factory. In the future, this could have been rotated like so. So this card would have actually been discarded in this two section, all right? The numbers will always constantly change if you're rotating your factory. Okay, and that's how it works. In the future, let's say I played a three, it's gonna be in here. And then on my next turn, I play a two, this is gonna go here. And these cards will not come back to my hand until I'm rotating my factory to eventually pick them back up. All right, and then I could have played this as another two, it's also gonna go into my two section, and so on and so on and so on. So I'm gonna be playing cards in my hand, they're just gonna be discarded into my factory. All right, just for clarification, on your turn, you are just playing one card for that action on that card, not multiple cards. All right, that leads us into following. All right, so you are gonna notice that each card that might be played has both a color and a rank. It's almost like a trick-taking game. There's three different colors in this game, um, and they range from one through four. Okay, so almost like a trick-taking game. All right. After the active player has played their action card, whatever it may be, it doesn't actually matter, the other players, in turn order, can also play a card of the same color but a higher rank to also perform that action. Okay, so as the active player, if they played a one blue, the other players can play a two, three, or four of blue to also perform this action. FYI, there are wild cards. Wild cards obviously stand for any color. All right, uh, but as long as they play a higher number than the active player, they'll also perform this action. It is very important that the other players don't actually matter amongst themselves. So they can all play twos, for example, and they can also follow. They don't have to be higher than the previous player as long as they're higher than the active player. All right, the active player is gonna discard his card into the number displayed on his card, and the other players are gonna do the exact same thing. So if they discard a four blue, they're not discarding that four into the one slot, they're gonna discard it into the four slot. All right, as depicted here. All right, so let's go over these six basic action cards because these are the icons that you'll pretty much encounter with all future cards. Uh, keep in mind though, there are some extra special abilities in the deck, but some of them are written in plain English. Just read the text and apply its effects when you wanna play the card. But I'm just gonna go over these six basic ones right now. All right, so let's start with this one here. This means how many droplets of water you're gonna boil to create steam in your factory. So uh, if there's a two, you're gonna take two water droplets and move them up. If it was a three, obviously you move three. And if it says max, you move them all up. All right, pretty self-evident. If you only have one at the bottom and you have to move up two, well, you just move up as many as you want, as you can. All right, the next icon to talk about is this one. This is getting resources from the general supply. You take either a large gear or a small gear. When it appears as a payment, you either pay a large gear or a small gear. 
all right but with this car let's say i want to take a large gear all right i'm going to add it to my factory so chrome gears when you you uh, get them they go into your general supply but the large and small gears must be placed in the three sector of your factory there's a little reminder here that any gears obtained go there uh, and this goes for rotating and one-shot machines as well they're all going to go into the three sectors so if it was like this they're all going to go into this sector here all right the next four cards pretty much work exactly the same way that's taking a card or a tile from the general board all right now before i talk about these keep in mind that whenever you take something from the tableau it gets refilled right away for the next person that follows or the next person's turn they're gonna have a full selection of three cards or three tiles every time all right so the first player might take this one if they're taking a one shot then you refill the person that follows can always choose from the next three as well all right so um here we go let's talk about rotating machines first all right these are the ones at the bottom over here you're gonna take it and just like i mentioned it all goes into your three slot all right, there's no limit to the amount of machines you can have in an area. So if I got more rotating machines, I just keep adding them to this sector. All right, next is the one shots, the square ones. Again, just exactly like rotating machines. They're gonna go in the sector. They're gonna have the flat, flat top instead of the little bump, as you can see. And again, there's no limit to the amount that you can have in that sector. All right. Up next is getting a advanced engineer. All right, that's a little guy with the hat. All right, you get to take any card that you want and add it directly into your hand. So by placing this in my factory, all right, I'm gonna take whichever card I want. Let's say I want this one, and you're gonna put it in your hand. All right, if you do take a four, all right, there's a little reminder here, you do need to use up a water and a victory point. So for example, if I took this guy, everything slides over. So I'm gonna have to pay a water and lose a victory point into the general supply. And the last thing you can take from the tableau is a chrome machine. All right, so there's always six available for you to take. There's the basic ones on top and the more advanced ones at the bottom. The ones on top cost only one chrome. The ones at the bottom cost two or more. Uh, and uh, you just take the one that you want. All right, so let's say I take this one. Now, when you take a chrome machine, you got a couple of choices. Right, it either needs to be placed in your tableau right away, unbuilt side up, or into your little depot, workshop, storage area on the left over here. Okay, You might want to do that if you have sort of an active ability already in play. Uh, you don't want to put on top an unbuilt machine if you can't build it right away. Maybe you'd want to put it in your uh, storage area first before you build it so you don't lose the ability because obviously if you're laying tiles on top of them, you're losing the ability of the tiles that are currently below it. All right, so again, two choices. Now, uh, you can freely move them uh, from the storage onto your board if you're picking up another uh, Chrome machine. So if this was here uh, and I got another one, well, I can move this onto my track and then put my other one in storage. All right, now, when somebody takes a Chrome machine and you're refilling the Tableau, you always add another white uh, victory point marker to the same row chrome machine uh, on the right. All right. So if I took it from the first row, the one on the right is going to have one. And then the next player, let's say they took this one, you're going to add another victory point when you refill the tableau. All right, we're going to talk about that later because that's one of the end game triggers, uh, the number of victory points that are left in the supply. If you take the Chrome machine with the victory points, well, you get to keep the victory points, put them into your personal supply. Everything else gets shifted over. And then you add a victory point to the rightmost uh, Chrome machine on the same row afterwards. All right, just a special note on the four valued cards. When you discard them, they actually go face down in the four slot. And this becomes important when we talk about the cleanup step later. You're not going to pick this card up right away because it's in the X section. All right, you're going to have to rotate this and then it gets flipped up and then you'll be able to pick it up after. All right, the other option on your turn instead of playing a card is rotating your corrosion wheel on your factory. And how that works, you're just going to turn it 90 degrees clockwise. All right, so the X is going to change location. All right, by doing so, 
four different things get activated and you can activate these in any order that you like. All right, first thing that's gonna activate is all your rotating machines in your tableau, no matter what sector they're in, they're gonna activate. So this one is getting water, but you can get resources, chrome uh, uh, gears and all that sort of stuff with different tiles. After that, all your Chrome machines that have a special rotating ability also trigger. So for example, this is whenever I rotate, I'll gain a large gear. All right, and just like before, all your resources go into sector three. All right, after that, all your one-shot machines are gonna trigger if they were built, and that's uh, the built side up, all right, without the resources showing. I'm gonna flip them over. All right, and you can activate them in any order that you like. So this is gonna give me Chrome gears, and this is gonna give me an extra water for my boiler. And the last thing is if the X is pointing towards you, there's a little reminder here that you're also going to activate the prototype machines, which are the pre-printed icons on your board. So here I'm going to gain a water, a large gear, and a white victory point from the general supply and add it to my personal supply. All right, so those were the main actions. Let's look at the secondary actions. All right, so secondary actions can be before or after your main action. And the two specific ones that we're talking about are building machines, either one shots or Chrome and using your steam. All right. So let's take a look at building machines first. It's pretty self evident. They're all written the exact same way on the machine. You're going to see the cost to flip it over. So this is going to cost me a Chrome gear and two small gears. You take the small gears from anywhere in your factory. It doesn't have to come from the same location. And you're gonna turn all that stuff into the general supply. And if you can pay for it, well, you're just gonna flip it over. All right, remember what I mentioned before. So if it was in your storage area, it flips over into the same Chrome spot as indicated on your player board. All right, for one shot machines, works the exact same way. On top of the tile, it'll tell you what resource you need to turn in. So this is too large and a small. Sometimes you'll see the option one or the other, like this one. All right, two of either small or big or a combination of the two. And then also for the one shot, you'll encounter two special icons. This icon here means use up steam. So we move steam from the top section to the bottom section. And the only other icon that you'll encounter is for the objective ones. You'll see that little hat with the crack going through it. This means you gotta discard an advanced engineer either from your hand or from anywhere in your tableau. So for example, I can take this guy and put him in the discard as the one I wanna pay for that tile. All right, the other secondary action is using steam from your boiler. Uh, to perform an action, all right? By the way, using steam just means moving a water droplet from the top sector uh, to the bottom sector. All right, there's a couple of things you can do with steam. The first and most simplest is just refilling something in the market display. So there's a little reminder here. You can take anything from column C and put it in the discard. So let's say I really want to reach this one. I can discard this one. Everything gets shifted over and this one joins the display. All right, remember, you do that before your main action, so before taking something. So that's maybe if you see something you really want in the draw deck, you might want to do that. All right, but the main use for Steam is rotating objects in your factory. All right, you can rotate engineers, one-shot machines, or turning machines. All right, and each droplet moves at one sector counterclockwise. All right. Uh, so if I use a steam here to rotate a turning machine, all right, you activate a turning machine no matter which quadrant it's moving into. All right, so whether you're moving into the X quadrant or any other quadrant, you're going to gain the ability. All right. You can rotate one-shot machines. Now, one-shot machines don't activate, but if you do act, uh, rotate it into the X sector, it's gonna trigger its ability right away. And the last thing you can rotate is an engineer and they don't do anything, uh, they just get closer to the X. Uh, so you can re-pick up the cards. All right, the absolute last thing to talk about is the cleanup part. And that takes place before and after your main action as the last step. And the cleanup consists of just cleaning up sector X. All right, so if there's any gears there, they're gonna rust and you're gonna add them back to the general supply. If you have any machines, they're going to get discarded into the general supply. And all your engineers, well, guess what? They go back to your hand. So that's how you get your engineers that you had previously played back to your hand when they eventually hit sector X. That's when you get them back. 
All right, so that's pretty much all the rules to the game. Uh, just rem as a general note, if we're going through the turn order again, your secondary actions, as many secondary actions as you want, don't forget to clear afterwards. Then you do your main action, either playing a card or rotating your factory. Uh, then another maintenance, again, building as many stuff as you want or using steam to rotate stuff. And then don't forget to clear. And then it's the end of your turn, you're going to pass this over to the next player. And finally, let's talk about how the game actually ends. All right, so there's two end game triggers to corrosion. All right, the first being if there's only three white victory point chits left in the supply. All right, and secondly, if there's only three award objective tiles left in the supply as well. All right, keep in mind this can happen on anyone's turn, whoever has the wrench. All right, after that, after that player's finished this turn, the game doesn't quite end. All right, we go into some special rounds where people could spend victory points to take an extra turn. All right, so what you're going to do in turn order, so you're still going to be passing the wrench around, uh, the player gets to decide if they want to spend the victory point to take an extra turn. All right, so for the first go around the table, they have to spend one victory point. All right, when, once everyone has decided and taken their action, all right, they're going to get to decide if they want to spend two victory points to take a second turn. And then they can do it again for the third turn, and that's the most you can have the fourth turn. All right. Keep in mind, if you do pass and not take an, a turn, you are out for the for the rest of the game. All right. It says pass for good. You take one last maintenance step, and then you're gone. All right. So if you don't do it on the first time, you can't come back in afterwards and take an extra turn. You're out of the game. All right. So that's the end game trigger. And finally, when you finish the game, you're going to go to end game scoring. All right, the scoring in this game is extremely simple. All right, you're only going to score three things. But before you score, uh, you can turn in some chrome gears for the green victory point chits. It's a two to one ratio. So if you turn in four, you'll get two green victory point chits. All right, so first, you'll score those victory point chits. So the white ones and the green ones combined, you'll write your score. After that, you're going to score all your completed chrome machines. So if they're on the green side up, you're going to score the points in the circular area here. You add them all together, add up all the ones in your current tableau. All right, and after that, you're going to score all your awards. I'm not going to go through each one, but in plain text on top, it tells you how to score each and every one. You're going to tally up all those points together, add up all those three. Whoever has scored the most is going to win. Corrosion. All right, so those are all the rules to the game. Click the link below for my playthroughs. We'll see you in the next one. Later.